And we are live. What's going on, everybody? Jacob Snow here, and I'm bringing you the first in a series of videos which will uh, hopefully be the perfect assistance for people who are new to games with party composition or party comp, uh, such as MOBAs like League of Legends, Dota 2, and um, Smite, uh, games like World of Warcraft, Overwatch, and so on. Um, this is a general party composition video, and while it does have applicable uh, information relating to Legends of Albedon, it is not solely focused on Legends of Albedon. And it's a good general definition video for people who want to breach into this genre but are very daunted by the terminology utilized uh, frequently and commonly in party chat. Uh, this is going to be a relatively short, um, brief overlook of this information, but it will give you the information you need to at least keep up in these conversations, which, when I first broached into MOBAs and MMOs, I found very difficult. So, first off, um, the terminology being reviewed in this video in particular um, exclusively relates to uh, characters, and while you may hear this in builds, um, in more advanced gameplay in games like MOBAs and uh, MMOs, and as well as tabletop games, um, the primary focus is on the class and character class selection itself over the build uh, applications. And we will be looking at the terms for DPS, tank, support, flex, and jank. Um, these are the general terms, and I'm not going into the terms that are MOBA specific, um, such as bottom, mid, top, uh, etc., because those are weirdly specialized and variant from game to game. For instance, what um, Mobile Legends players call bottom and top, as well as League of Legends players, Smite calls solo and carry. Um, and No Mobile Legends calls it uh, gold and EXP. So we're not looking at the lane terms because they are too variant from game to game, but we are still looking at the popular terminology. Um, starting with our friend the DPS. The definition of DPS is damage per second, which the first place I ever heard it was uh, in World of Warcraft chats um, as well as Elder Scrolls Online. You hear about DPS a lot. Um, you hear about it a lot in games like Destiny, as well as MOBAs and um, MMOs. Pretty much everywhere the term DPS has found some root uh, in the jargon of the game. Uh, the term is used in RPGs even if damage per round would be more accurate. DPS is the accepted term. So when you hear somebody go, we need DPS, uh, that's what they mean. They mean damage per second, um, which traditionally comes out in classes in classes like assassins or mages, not usually in uh, tanks or guardians or, uh, you know, just it, DPS is usually confined to mages and assassins over warriors and tanks, etc., uh, the purpose of the DPS is high damage output. Damage per second is how much damage they can output in a single second. Um, and in some games, especially toward late game, the DPS a DPS character is capable of putting out is absurd. Um, they are perfect for dealing with bosses as well as in MOBAs. They're perfect for um, ganks, which allows you to just like jump down and just write someone out of existence. But in RPGs and MMOs, the DPS is a crucial part of the party because without a DPS, the tanks aren't going to be able to kill the boss. Well, I mean, they can, but it's going to take forever. Uh, DPS is the party's primary source of enemy removal and damage because in a balanced party, you're going to have people tanking, you're going to have people supporting, and you're going to have a DPS who is killing everything while being supported and by the support and protected by the tank. Um, you'll hear a lot of the following terms when talking about DPSs, like Glass Cannon. Uh, Glass Cannon is a DPS that has pretty much crap for health and defense, but their damage output is what makes them a valid thing. 
if you're able to ambush with the glass cannon or just creep up on somebody, you will be able to write them out of existence before they can destroy you. Uh, so glass cannon is uh, popular in terms of game balance, but I'm not sure they should be as popular as they are simply because they are difficult to master. But they're great for late game players who are you know, just looking to brush up. Uh, glass cannon can be very good, but they require more technical skill. Uh, DPS subtype teleporter means you're moving around constantly. Um, and in games like League of Legends and Dota and Smite, that would be the... Well, see, there we go again. Uh, Smite, this would be a support character wandering around the battlefield going where they are needed. Dangerously close to flex territory, but the damage output is high enough and the defenses and HP are low enough that they don't count per flex. Uh, assassins are player killers exclusively, um, primarily focusing on uh, elimination of enemy players or um, enemy VIPs in RPGs and MMOs. Uh, assassins have enough evasion to get away, unlike the glass cannon. Uh, making them a easier DPS to learn DPS with as opposed to a glass cannon. Um, example, well, I'm too behind on League of Legends and everything for to really accurately know what would define a glass cannon or wouldn't uh, at the way the game has been built at this time, but there are examples, and if you look it up, I'm sure you'll find plenty. The next term that we're going to look at is the tank. Uh, the, ta the definition of the term tank is a high HP character with strong defenses, just like tanks. Um, tanks usually have lower damage output and movement speed, resulting in them being good for establishing where the front line is more so and pushing it forward as the DPS gives them clearance. Uh, tanks are the front line of the party, and you usually have a DPS orbiting a tank. So in MMOs, the tank is there to do two things. Uh, you're supposed to provide supplemental damage and protection if the DPS needs to retreat and recover. When you move, the front line moves, and you're also going to be protecting the supports. Uh, tanks are usually... Uh, a great example of a tank would be Reinhardt from Overwatch. Um, very tanky, not very fast. A tank might have one or two mobility abilities, such as Reinhardt's Charge. But your primary purpose as a tank is not to be going into the thick of things and killing the enemy. Your primary purpose as a tank is to establish where the front line is and make sure that your allies have a place to hide should things start going sideways. Um, tank subtypes, and again, we're going to be using Overwatch as an example here because it's the easiest one to do, are shielders, like Reinhardt, who have protective barriers or walls that they can throw up. Another great example is Terra from uh, Smite. A shielder tank isn't as durable as some other types of tanks, such as the Damage Sponge, which we'll get to in a moment, but they are very good at providing wide range of cover for people to hide behind. Uh, the Damage Sponge tank subtype is somebody like Roadhog or Wrecking Ball, where it takes a lot of focused enemy fire to really get rid of them, um, an example in Smite would be Cerberus or Kepri, but the Damage Sponge doesn't have options for covering retreats as much other than just yeeting themselves into the battle. Uh, damage Sponges usually have, instead of mobility abilities, they usually have things that allow them to heal themselves a bit to kind of get the load off the support, providing the support with opportunities to heal the DPS as the Damage Sponge sponges up the damage. Uh, tanking is relatively easy to learn how to do, but is relatively difficult to master, as in video games, uh, tanking uh, requires very precise timing, whereas in tabletop RPGs, not as much. Uh, like in Albedon, it's less timing-based and more just understanding the layout of the board, but in MOBAs and in MMOs, uh, knowing where to go and when is what makes a tank difficult to master. But for beginners, tanks are really good because it takes them longer to die uh, against inexperienced enemies or low-level mobs. I need to do the enemy definitions. 
that's a video I need to do. All right, next up we're gonna look at the support. Uh, support definition, supports use healing, buffs, and a combination thereof to support the party. Uh, this is where Smite leaves the chat, because in Smite, a support is more of a roamer, um, which is, as they're not on here, a roamer is someone who goes around the battlefield where they're needed. Uh, that is more of a flex subtype, so I guess they're kind of there, and we'll talk about that later. But in games like League of Legends or MMOs, supports are very much... You're going to be hugging the tank a lot, and you're not going to really be focusing on killing things, you're going to be focusing on keeping the people killing things alive. Supports are crucial to party survival, with heals and stat boosts, or buffs. A stat boost is a buff. Um, supports can keep tanks alive, which keeps the front line moving forward, and can help the DPS recover more quickly, thereby increasing the amount of enemies that can eliminate before falling. Um, supports are essential yet often underappreciated, because the theory in several playgroups that I've had is if we have a good enough tank and enough DPSs, we won't need healing because there will be nothing alive to kill us. And that's great for limited scrimmages, such as, you know, bouncing off the enemy team uh, early game in League or um, in early level encounters in MMOs. However, as you reach later game content, or just late game in a MOBA, you're really going to miss that healing. You're going to miss that those buffs that only supports can give out effectively. While there are characters that can buff that aren't supports, supports are more optimized for buffing. Um, because that's their entire thing. Um, support subtypes are as follows. You've got the healer, which is a character like Mercy. Uh, Mercy does have a buff that she can deliver with her R1, but, or LB, no RB, if you're on Xbox. But her primary focus isn't that buff, it's the fact that she can heal and revive, um, making Mercy one of the better video game healers I've ever had the privilege of playing. Um, healers are, as per usual, they're going to be hugging the tanks more than the DPSs because the healer can keep the tank alive, which keeps the front line moving forward. Um, the next support subtype is the buff bus, which, um, I can't think of a good example because, again, I'm too behind on League, but a buff bus is someone who is pretty much they're there to provide boosts, and buff bus supports are usually going to be hugging the DPS because you're giving them armor, you're giving them extra damage, you're giving them everything they need to do their job properly while still supporting the tank in it in some measure. Uh, support subtype Reviver, that's really rare to have a support subtype that's only focuses reviving. Uh, usually healers will have a revive functionality over uh, support dedicated pretty much entirely to reviving, but that is a thing that can happen, especially um, in games where you need all damage on deck. Uh, reviver support is there because once you're down, now we need you back up, but I need to be focused on pouring out damage alongside everyone else. Uh, next up, we are talking about the flex. Uh, flexes are my personal favorite, and it's more of a play style than a character, but there are characters that count as flex. Um, a flex character can shift from one role to another without making any major inconvenience in build or play style. Uh, junglers would count toward flexing, I suppose, although junglers usually wind up with DPS, but still. Uh, that gets into the more difficult to define MOBA terminology, which is why it isn't in here. Uh, the flex is an important part of any team holding more than three members, as a flex can tank damage, support other people, or can help the DPS with whatever needs killing, able to switch between tasks seamlessly. Flexing is somewhat difficult to achieve, making flex players extremely valuable. A great example of a flex character, dipping again into the well of Overwatch, uh, Soldier 76. Soldier 76 flexes between DPS and heals, as his heal beacon allows him to support the team's offensive, while he also has very healthy damage output. Depending on whether or not healers are present depends on what the soldier needs to do. Uh, if the healers are down or 
off somewhere else doing god knows what. Soldier can help push the front line by healing the takes with his hail beacon, if the player so chooses. Uh, in a game like Overwatch or a game like League of Legends or Dota, a flex player is very valuable because, let's say your team already has all of the damage characters they need, the flex can, without any trouble, pick up a support character or a tank character and not be a detriment to the team because, well, I'm only good with DPS, but I guess I have to if flex doesn't have that problem. A flex can seamlessly go, we've already got damage covered, we've already got support covered, I'll play tank, or we've already got support covered, we've already got tank covered, I'll play damage, so on and so forth. Uh, the great thing about flexing is it's always a hybridization of the previously discussed roles, whereas you know, where you've got the Reviver and the Buff Bus and the Assassin and the Glass Cannon. A uh, Flex can be any mixture of those depending on the way the character that they're playing is built and uh, just how they're playing personally. Uh, I love Flexes. I love having a Flex in my party. It is one of the best things in the whole wide world, but they are relatively rare if my time with Smite and Overwatch and League of Legends are any indicator flexes are pretty uncommon because most people I've got my two favorite characters and that's what I play <laughs> so um, the final term we're going to look at is something that uh, the meaning can shift from game to game but according to online dictionaries this is what it is jank you will hear about jank a lot um, in games like destiny and the manner in which it is used is not always accurate to what it actually means. The definition of jank is it is usually used for builds and characters that have unreliable effectiveness. And that's the online definition from the actual dictionary. Jank is unreliably effective. In some situations, the jank character can be amazing! In other situations, jank will literally drag down your raid or your game because it's so unreliable and usually in games like MOBAs if a character is jank it's not the player's fault it's the game design's fault because it's unreliably effective and requires everything to be just so in order for it to actually work um, as it says here depending on who you talk to jank is either the best thing in the world or the worst you'll usually hear jank spoken of highly by uh early game players or players who have played the game so much it's actually absurd uh, because late game players know how to make jank work and when to make jank work whereas early game players this is my favorite character I'm playing them no matter what or this is my favorite item such as destiny this is my favorite item I'm using it no matter what it's jank it can work but it's not optimal, and in late game content, you need optimal. Um, causes of jank, one thing that's uh, not listed here. Uh, Over-optimized builds uh, are in MOBAs, one of the primary causes of jank, because let's say your build in the MOBA is entirely focused on dealing damage, you didn't focus enough on healing, so if you pop up and you're able to land off a couple of your abilities or a couple lucky hits, you can turn the tide of the fight. The rest of the time, if you get caught alone, or even in a balanced team fight, you're going to die like that because your build is janky. It's unreliably effective, and it's too focused on dealing damage and not focused enough on survivability or energy. Uh, weird item selection can also be a uh, source of jank, as you'll see in Destiny and Destiny 2 a lot, choosing the wrong exotic can make you jank. Picking something like uh, Heart of Inmost Light, yeah, you're effective, but you're not optimized. And talk to anybody in the Destiny community, if it's not optimized, it's jank. Um, because it's cool logic is the most common source of jank I run into personally, uh, because I like this character, I'm going to play them no matter what, even if our team doesn't need them. Um, or, this is my favorite weapon, I'm using it no matter what, because it's cool. Even though it's not what the raid boss takes damage to, or whatever. Um, and, 
in MOBAs, a lot of times jank isn't anybody's fault. It's designer snafus, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Designers are fallible, and they can wind up making something that sounds great and amazing and balanced on paper, but in practice, it's just not going to work. Um, now, as an important qualifier, in some circles, I have heard use of jank to define something that is overpowered, like it's always good. That is jank being used improperly, but be aware of the fact that if somebody says, uh, like, just, just an off the top of my head example, Caitlin is jank, or uh, last word is jank, um, and they're like really hyped about it, they're usually using it in the positive context of it's really broken. Um, it's really good all the time. Whereas saying last word is jank is actually pretty accurate because there are a lot of circumstances in which last word, the gun in Destiny 2, not actually effective or what you need. And if you're using it anyway, you really need to switch your weapon. But it does have its uses and it does have its place. The thing with 90% of stuff that's jank, it's not going to cause you to lose or to fail out of a raid unless you wind up in that late game area where you needed things to be balanced differently and they weren't. Um, and jank, one character being built jankily, be it in League of Legends or whatever, is going to slow down a raid. Two characters is really bad for a raid or a game. If three or more of the characters on your team or in your party are jank, you're not going to have a good time. And like I said, if the player is skilled enough to pull it off, even if the situation isn't optimal, your chances of losing are helped a little bit, but jank is still really bad and to be avoided uh, if you can. Um, and in conclusion, uh, it's because I went to edit it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. I uh, hope it clarified some of the terminology that you've heard utilized in your MOBA group or in your Destiny group or in your World of Warcraft group. Um, there will be more videos like this as more terminology uh, requires definition and this was just a basic character overview. It's not uh, talking about laning or anything like that. This is just the basic characters, how they're supposed to be used and what people might mean when they're saying these things. Um... And my final piece of advice to you is using the information you've gained in this video, springboard off it. Look up other videos talking about your favorite playstyle. Now that you know that since you always play Reinhardt and you enjoy characters that are that durable, you're playing a tank, look up other tank builds. What makes a tank janky? What makes them good? What makes them bad? What you should and shouldn't do? Always look for more information on this stuff if you're looking to learn, because it can very easily be the difference between having a great time with a game that you love and having a substandard time with a game that you love. I look forward to making the next one of these videos, and until next we meet, may your journey continue. I hope you have a great week, and uh, enjoy your summer vacation. TTYL.